consequences, this is a company that should inspire manufacturers across the country. Started off as a small port unit, Bharat Port literally forged its way to the global automotive expressway using high technology manufacturing to compete with the best in the world. But success and scale have come with its set of challenges, especially over the last few years as Bharat Port's key market slowed. I caught up with Baba Kalyani, the company's chairman, and I began by asking him how things are looking. Our business is highly challenged uh, right now. Uh, we're running at capacities uh, which are not optimum. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, it's a difficult situation. But the good news, uh, in spite of a difficult situation, is the robustness of our business has become such in the last few years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is the impact of whatever actions we have taken after all this crisis, uh, so-called crisis that we have faced from 2008, that even at a very low capacity ut utilization, we still make decent margins. So we have recalibrated our business model, we have recalibrated our cost structures, and we continue to do that on one hand. On the other hand, uh, we continue to explore opportunities of how to improve market share and how to get into new markets. So that's the kind of two-pronged uh, action that we are taking. Now, to give you a specific answer on the automotive side, uh, you have to break the automotive side into commercial vehicles and pass cars. And in pass cars, you have to break it again in two parts, uh, the high-end luxury cars, which is the Jaguar, Land Rovers, the, the, the Mercedes-Benz, the Audis, uh, BMWs, and uh, let's say the high volume produced cars, which is the Renault, Fiat, PSA, Ford, uh, and all that kind of thing. Now, if you look at North America, Pascar is doing extremely well. It's back to you know 15 million plus, and uh, it's doing well. And the industry which is connected with Pascar in North America is booming. Uh, but if you look at the truck market, the truck market was uh, extremely low last year. Uh, in 2012. In 2013, uh, order intake for trucks is high. Uh, it's running at uh, 22 to 24,000 per month. But these order delivery dates are later part of the year. So actual production is still uh, a little low. In Europe, uh, the high-end cars in Europe are doing extremely well. I mean, they just announced last week that all these guys, Daimler and BMW and Audi, are not going to take a summer break. They're going to run their plants through summer because the demand is so strong. And all the high volume guys are going to take a longer break because uh, the demand is low. What about India? It seems as the slowdown is just catching up with the automobile sector, but then the hope is that it might be a short-lived window. You know, in India, the truck business went down, the commercial vehicle business went down first and went down the fastest, uh, minus 30% uh, uh, you know, negative growth. And then it was the pass car and the utility vehicles where the uh, reduction in growth has not been as severe as the commercial vehicle. You know, it's been a uh, few percentage points, single digit. But it's been, uh, it's been in the negative territory. Now, why is this happening? Let's understand why this is happening. Take commercial vehicles first. A, commercial vehicles in any country has a relationship with GDP. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in, our, in India, we have had a sharp drop in GDP. We have had five years where GDP grew 8, 8.5% eight on an average. I mean, some years was plus 9, some years was 7, but average was 8.5. And then all of a sudden from there, we have come down to 5. So a, a big drop in GDP, number one. Number two, uh, a lot of programs uh, which were running, uh, like mining, was suddenly stopped. Highway building programs uh, suddenly came to a standstill because, uh, you know, inability to uh, uh, give contracts out uh, uh, at a fast enough rate or some legal disputes and, and things like that. And a lot of other large investments which have got stuck up for one reason or the other, mm -hmm in the system. So you have an economy where a large part of capital expenditure that was supposed to take place has either got stuck, frozen or not happening. 
The latest data indicates that perhaps we will see a sub-5% growth even in the next financial year. It means that the slowdown is going to be a protracted one. What is the pain that you foresee after having seen many economic cycles and where are we at it right now? You know, history has shown us that whenever uh, our economy or any economy goes down so rapidly, it takes at least three years to recover, to come back to its, uh, let's say, earlier uh, levels. So if we want to grow at 7.5%, 8%, it's going to be three years. And if, if next year is also going to be uh, sub-5, then it's going to, you know, 2015 is gone. So you're looking at 2018 and 2019. The slowdown in India has had a deep impact across sectors and on companies like Bharat Forge that bet big on the India story. Since 2006, the company actively worked on moving out of the automotive space to broad base, a strategy that saw the company use its metallurgy skills to expand into areas like power and locomotives. Now with over 700,000 crores of money stuck as investments, every company has been hit. Well, I'm also suffering because of this problem because we also have a large project stuck in Mundra uh, uh, due to a code issue, uh, but that's a different matter. I think on this subject, uh, there's a lot of action that's being taken. Uh, I think the finance minister has elaborated some actions. Uh, the prime minister has, uh, you know, put into place uh, a process to fast-track projects. I'm seeing uh, in, in the power ministry, uh, the power ministry is, uh, you know, putting a lot of efforts, uh, uh, very strong efforts uh, to get this uh, log jam that has been created in the power ministry where you've got people who are setting up investments in power plant and then there is no coal or the coal prices have gone haywire. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think a lot of work is going on, uh, a lot of vigorous work is going on. I think even if you start low-hanging fruits and people start getting confidence, business starts getting confidence that, okay, things are happening as they used to happen before, then I think the investment cycles will kickstart. See, all of us today have just uh, said that no more investments, you know, we're just uh, uh, holding back because we don't know where to invest I and mean, in what to invest. That is a concern that many in India have faced. The last few years have been tough for Bharat Forge a company that has been on the forefront of change. More on how the story was scripted and the lessons learned after this break.